Hey everyone, Daryl Eves here. Now, there's one thing that I know about YouTube, and there's one constant, and basically that constant is change. It's always changing. It's always transforming. It's always evolving. They're, they're always little meddling with YouTube, and it always happens because, you know, as the platform grows, they're trying to improve it, but with the improvement and the change, and sometimes they have flops, Google Plus integration, come on. Now recently there's been a lot of YouTube content creators talking about a new issue that they're facing, which is they're losing views and they've seen a huge dip, a huge decline in the last few months of views and they're freaking out. They're getting mad because they don't know what's going on and they're saying, oh, you know, YouTube's broken now because this is not working for me anymore. So in this video, we're gonna cover a lot of those questions if YouTube's broke and all these little things about the algorithm. And we're really gonna look at a lot of data and deep dive and geek out and really explain what the true issue is and what YouTube actually wants. Let's do this. DarylEves.com now there's been a lot of discussion on the tubes and also on Twitter and there's been a lot of people talking about what's going on, what they think, their hypothesis and their answers. And some of the answers that they're giving are way off. I mean, way off. Um, what I find fascinating too is people are trying things to see if they can test it. And I think that's really cool. I do a lot of testing uh, all the time for myself and my clients to try to figure, you know, what's actually happening, what's actually working. One uh, specific test caught my eye from Drama Alert. They basically said, hey, you know what? We're seeing a dip in views and we think that YouTube's all about engagement. It's all about comment like. If we can get a trillion likes, then guess what? Our video will actually be served out more. It'll be more suggested and it'll be picked up in browse feature and guess what they did a test and um, basically this video did not perform any better than any other video even though that had three times the engagement than their other videos in that week now the interesting thing is there's a lot of theories out there there's a lot of people giving attention and time and there's only a few people in the world that actually really do a lot of due diligence and understanding the data uh, one of the, the great videos that I saw just, uh, just a couple days ago was Matt Pat. He doesn't do this all the time, but he basically uh, was decoding what was going on and did a really, really great job at explaining what the data is and how that affects a lot of creators. Now, I'll put that in the description below. And there's other creators like Matt Gillian, Matt Balick, that's a lot of Matt's. <laughs> and myself and others that really deep dive into the analytics and really try to understand the algorithm as much as possible. Now, one thing that you guys probably didn't know, but Google actually puts out uh, their information publicly for a lot of people to actually read and to consume. Now, one of the things that they, they put out there is patents. And you know, I've been doing internet marketing since 1999 and I've been really involved with a lot of research of understanding the dynamics of how things work and how search engines operate. And you know, I'd really follow people like Danny Sullivan and a few others and really dig deep in things that YouTube announces or Google announces or any patents that they actually uh, submit. Now we could talk about patents and we could talk about the changes in 2012 where they switched over to watch time and how it evolved and transformed from then. But I want to simplify this because I think it's really important that we simplify the intentions of YouTube, what they actually want and where they're actually going. So the question for you right now is what is the number one goal for YouTube? To make more money. Well, let's further define that. It's actually to become a lot more profitable. Now, in a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, the CEO at YouTube mentioned that they have a billion users. However, they make little to no profit. So if profit is their main focus, 
let's figure out actually how they make money. Now we all know this, it's through ads and ad revenue. Um, and if we can encourage you know, more people to come on the platform, then they actually make more revenue. Now what, what strategies and plans that YouTube can actually put in place to become more profitable? Now one of the things is they don't have control over the content. So if they would actually put in YouTube spaces that you know some of the content would improve because it's gonna help creators create better content. You're gonna do Creators Academy so that it's gonna teach creators what they need to do to make better videos and to build communities and get more people engaged in your content. They're also going to start YouTube Red, which is a subscription service, which they've done. And they're also going to pay for content uh, creators to make specific content just for YouTube, uh, giving them something where they can leverage their audiences and get different people watching longer form content or getting into a subscription service. So they have a lot of control and they do a lot of different things. However, there is a strategy that they've been using for a very long time that, that gets overlooked. And it's a strategy that they have complete control over and it's all about where the traffic comes from for your videos and your channels. Now what I actually do for a living is I actually own a company and we work with YouTubers and brands and we help them develop audiences, get more views and really monetize. So we actually have access to a lot of data and I'm going to show you two specific YouTube channels and some data, but we're going to go back in time a little bit and see where YouTube was and the traffic sources where they were at and what YouTube's actually tweaking along the way and where they're actually pointed now. So let's look at channel A. This is for the year 2015, and this channel actually uploads three to four times a week. Now you can see that they have over a half a billion minutes watched uh, during that year and just shy of 200 million video views. I think all of us would love that and have the growth that's actually happening on this channel. So most content creators just care about the views. Now for me specifically, when I'm working with a client, it doesn't matter if they're a big YouTube channel, small YouTube channel, a brand, I look at what YouTube cares about and it is watch time and watch time minutes. Now let's look at the traffic sources for channel A here and it's no surprise that suggested videos is the number one traffic source with 259 million minutes watched, 92 million views. Now here's the thing that I always look at is the, the views to average view duration, which is two minutes, 47 seconds. Now the number two traffic source for this channel is YouTube search, which makes sense that it'd have a higher view duration when someone's actually searching for something, um, they're gonna actually watch the video a little bit longer. And then playlists uh, is a surprising thing to see it as a high traffic source. It's number three in 2015 that their people were actually um, watching uh, these videos from a playlist. Um, and there's several reasons from it, but you can see that the average view duration is lower than, than the suggested video. It's two minutes, 38 seconds. And, and then we have browse feature, which is three minutes, 14 seconds, which is really high, a lot higher than suggested videos, a lot higher than playlists, but just under YouTube search, which is the number one, uh, you know, to keep people on the video and to have more watch time uh, for this specific channel. And then the last one is YouTube channels, and you can see it's at two minutes, 56 seconds. Now this is the data for 2015. Let's go ahead and look at the data for 2016. So for 2016, channel A exploded. They had 1.2 billion minutes watch, 443 million video views, and they had really good growth. Now let's look at the traffic sources. This is where it gets really, really interesting. You can see suggested videos is number one with uh, 673 million uh, minutes watched and 229 million video views. The average view duration, once again, isn't that high comparatively to the other, other couple here. Two minutes, 56 seconds, but the number two traffic source, so the changes between 2015 and 2016 is browse features. You can see that it's three minutes, 14 seconds, and you can see that there's actually more video views being consumed, and it's actually getting more watch time. So uh, the watch time with less views are being 
being consumed. And that's a real key. So if they can get actually more watch time with less views, that's something that they're going to look at. Let's go ahead and take a look at Channel B. Now, uh, this is for the year 2015. Uh, Channel B actually uploads daily, and they had 717 million minutes watched and just 149 million video views. Now, I think all of us would love that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the traffic sources for Channel B. Now, the first one is no surprise, suggested videos with 251 million min minutes watched. The average view duration is three minutes, 12 seconds. Now, it is a surprise here for a lot of you to see that YouTube channels is the second traffic source. Um, however, it's not a surprise for me. And basically what it is is when traffic goes to the YouTube channel, but this specific client has a huge offline following and basically they get their, their offline following to go to their video first on YouTube, which is a big deal. And you can see that when they do that, uh, they stay on for seven minutes, seven minutes, 22 seconds. That's a pretty big deal. But third, their uh, third traffic source is browse feature with an impressive six minutes, 36 seconds. So this is uh, uh, double, and this is more than double than the suggested videos. And then you can see YouTube search and then playlists uh, coming through. So basically, uh, these are the traffic sources for the other channel and this one uh, for 2015. Let's go ahead and look at channel B for 2016. They had a great year, uh, just under a billion minutes watched and 196 million video views, but I want to show a really particular attention to the traffic sources. Look right here, here's a surprise. Browse features is number one with 391 million minutes watched, 62 million views with the average view duration with an impressive six minutes, 18 seconds. Now the number two is suggested videos with 330 minutes watched, 88 million views, and three minutes and 45 seconds. Now, YouTube's goal is to get more watch time minutes, even though you can see that suggested videos has more views, the number one traffic source is browse feature with less views because the average view duration is longer. So that's some pretty interesting data and it's really the tip of the iceberg, but I think it's enough to prove the point that YouTube is really tweaking the traffic sources to enhance the minutes watched across YouTube. Now, a great friend of mine, uh, Chad Wild Clay, a content creator on YouTube, his channel blew up and it blew up because he noticed that, hey, this video came out and I'm gonna actually make a video that's gonna be a parody of this video and his channel exploded, but I'll let him talk about it. And this is exactly the algorithm I took advantage of. So I saw the Pen Pineapple Pen video. It was about to blow up. I decided to do a parody on it, put Pen Pineapple Pen in my title, put it in my tags. YouTube sees, oh, hey, this video is related. I'm gonna put Chad's video in the related to the Pen Pineapple Pen video. And I guess my thumbnail was good enough, so it kept me there. It pushed me onto other videos, pushed me on the people's home pages, and pretty quickly, 45 million views. Wow, people must have been sharing that. They must have really liked it. No, 99% of those views came from YouTube pushing my video. I might as well make another Pen Pineapple Pen parody. Immediately, YouTube's pushing it on the home screen, pushing it on related videos. 36 million views for that one. Well, gosh, I mean, it must have been a pretty good video. I mean, there's no way it could have got that many views if it was a shit video, right? Look at the thumbs down. Look at the audience retention. Within 22 seconds, half of everybody has clicked away. People don't seem to like this video. They're clicking away within 22 seconds. Maybe we should promote it more. So I actually agree a lot with what Chad says in his full video. I put a link in the description below to that video. But for this point, there is a lot of things going on here and I want to kind of explain. YouTube uses metrics to decide which videos to suggest to different viewers. Now, not just the metrics, there's also triggers that actually amplify those metrics and it makes things get really interesting on YouTube, especially in Chad's case. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the metrics and also the amplifiers and some of the triggers to really have your videos be suggested out there to have YouTube promote your videos. Now, the first metric that YouTube looks at is watch time. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, okay, I already know this. You know, this is just easy stuff. I mean, everybody's covered this, but they haven't covered it this way. There's multiple ways that YouTube looks at watch time. The first one that they actually look at is the watch time of your channel. 
you know, how much uh, watch time does your channel get on an average during the week, on an average during the month, on the average during the quarter, on the average during the year. And also, they're looking at each individual upload and is it following within the average of the channel. So there's a lot going on here. It also looks at the most recent upload and is really paying really close attention to the watch time of that most recent upload. And we'll get to the triggers on that in a few seconds. Now the next metric that YouTube looks at is relevancy. Now how does YouTube know that the content that we're actually producing is relevant to other videos that they're actually gonna suggest? Well, it's done in a couple ways. First way is through the meta information that you actually have on your videos. So that means the title, the description, and the tags. And I can't overemphasize if you want to get more suggested video views and more traffic is to spend a little bit more time on your title, your, your description, and your tags, and especially your thumbnail. Now, also being relevant is having uh, other similar content that you uploaded previously that's in your library uh, on YouTube and YouTube said, oh, okay, they've done this video before and they've done this video before because, you know, on my channel, I've done a lot of YouTube tips. So when I upload a YouTube tip, I'm already relevant in that sphere and I'm more recommended out across other people that are actually putting out videos on YouTube. And when YouTube matches it as, as well with my meta information for the video I just uploaded, it becomes more relevant. Now YouTube's really looking to predict the right video for the right viewer, and that's gonna bring up their watch time. And the metric that they really care about is viewership history. And they literally track every video that we watch. Doesn't matter if you're logged in or not. They wanna see the association from the viewer, the type of content that you like, and how you actually surf and navigate the platform, but also the relationships of the videos of what video you watch and what video you go to next and how long you stay on it and what do you go after that. And so that is kind of the key, how they predict a lot of the videos that are being suggested to you. Which leads me to the next one. It's actually engagement, but a lot of people actually get this wrong. It's like drama alert in this earlier example that we did in this video that they said, hey, if we get a whole bunch of likes, a trillion likes, and a lot of comments, then we're actually gonna come up more in suggested. We're actually gonna get more views, which it really failed, and they didn't. They didn't, it was actually average from what they were actually doing in a given week. What the engagement that they're actually looking for, that YouTube's looking for and the algorithm's looking for is the engagement with viewer history. And that's what they're interested in is how you engage with the content and where you actually go after the video. Are you going off platform? Are you staying on? Um, you know, what, what are you doing as you navigate and how you engage in the type of content? Now I could do a lot longer video on the metrics, uh, trust me I can, but let's talk about the triggers because the triggers are very interesting because the triggers amplify certain metrics that I just talked about and make things really interesting on YouTube. It creates this sense of authority and priority uh, to be suggested all over YouTube. So in Chad's case, I wanna talk about the triggers that are actually happening. He actually saw a video that was about to take off. He created a relevant parody. He put uh, relevant meta information in there and a great uh, thumbnail and then he uploaded his video. Now there's certain triggers that happen to his channel. Now right now, his channel had averages and, and YouTube's looking for some indicators and some triggers. So when uh, Chad uploaded this video to his channel, some of his subscribers were actually notified and they actually came to watch the video. Now YouTube was paying really close attention to the upload because what they care about is the velocity of the minutes watched on that video. So the faster the minutes watched are on that video, the more it's gonna suggest. And so as it came in, that video was being suggested more and more until it was associated with that main video that was really taking off and Chad was able to get millions and millions and millions of views. Now, this is what happened in this case is his uh, channel watch time went through the roof because he was getting new subscribers and these new subscribers were going back through his old library and looking at older videos. Um, his his uh, latest video was going through the roof as well. And so he was way above average uh, than what he's been doing previously, historically in that week, month, 
quarter and even year. And so YouTube says, okay, this is a factory. He has some authority here. This is something that we need to watch. And this is something that we need to help him promote. That's why 90% of his views actually came from YouTube but his competition didn't have the same channel authority. That's why he's being suggested more, even though at the end of the day, people weren't sharing the video. Is that YouTube actually promoting his video? But all in all, his channel went up in uh, minutes watched. That one specific upload was really interesting and it brought a lot of traffic, a lot of subscribers. We're talking hundreds of thousands of subscribers uh, to his channel, which they in turn watched more videos. Now, what happened next is the most important thing. Here he had all this authority. Here he had all this uh, weight with YouTube and he decides to upload his next video as another parody video for the same thing. So it was really relevant, uh, had a relevant title, um, it, the content was relevant, was almost the same description and tags. And as he did that, traffic came in, uh, that velocity came in, and YouTube went to promote. Now here's the interesting thing, is as it was being promoted, the reason why it was being promoted so heavily is because of the viewership history of a lot of people that actually watched the first original video and then Chad's video, then that was a, a video that was actually served uh, to those individuals because, hey, they already had the viewership history. And then also it was pushed out in other avenues because they knew if people watch that video, they're more than likely gonna watch the other two videos that Chad actually put in versus some other video that has maybe, you know, the watch time of, you know, 20, 20 minutes or whatever. So even though 50% on his, uh, his uh, second video, that 50% of the viewers dropped off after 20 seconds, the other indicators outweighed everything else. Now to emphasize the point, and it's something that you can do with your channel when something actually takes off, and it doesn't matter if it's immediate or if you have a video that actually pops. Now there's a good friend of mine, uh, Michael Beach and his wife, Rebecca, they're daily vloggers. They've been vlogging for about a year and they actually uh, have been putting out content and they were growing here and there and they got up to about 17,000 subscribers and you know they're really growing their audience and then they um, had their brother-in-law uh, pay his rent but they put him on a treasure uh, hunt <laughs> and basically what happened after that um, they, he, they pull it open, there's a treasure chest and they open it up and it was all his money uh, that he's paying rent that was right there um, for them to, to uh, have. And you know what? This is a great, clever video. Now, when they uploaded this video, it was performing quite well and their subscribers loved it. And they had a, a couple response videos too. They actually said, hey, we're gonna give this money to you as a subscriber. And you know, they gave some terms and different things like that. And then they had other ideas. And then the video popped. They got a whole bunch of traffic that went to that one specific video that was, you know, 35 minutes long or whatever it was. And they got a ton of velocity of minutes watched on that one video. So these indicators were going, the metrics were starting to go nuts. It was way above average, way above average. And um, it started to get really interesting. They were getting a lot of subscribers from that view. And um, he, he went out and said, he posted in Facebook. He's like, oh my gosh, this just popped. It was exactly what Daryl was talking about at the Vid Summit. So I PM'd him on Facebook, says, hey, we got to talk. And uh, I called him up and I says, look, we got to capitalize on this opportunity. He says, uh, we already put out a couple videos. And I says, no, we need to do it so that it's really relevant and it will piggyback off the traffic and increase that baseline, which we want to do. So everything that we discussed in this video of the authority, the triggers, the metrics, everything that's there. He had other videos that he released, but really thinking about the strategy for the next video, uh, the next video that we want YouTube to really suggest was important. So uh, we, uh, we had a plan, we had some great ideas, we released the video, it's the fastest growing video that they had on their channel. And what we did is a couple simple things. Number one, we actually pinned the post in the first video. We also uh, switched out the, uh, a couple cards in some popular videos on his channel so that it actually went to that video. We made it the featured video as well on his channel. We actually changed out some end screen elements so that that traffic was coming to that video. And before you know it, that video was now tied 
to the first video that was taking off and they went from 17,000 subscribers up to 80,000 subscribers and really their channel's growing, their audience is growing, they're getting a lot more watch time minutes and their baseline is now uh, increased. Now, this is where it's at and I know a lot of you have watched this video and you say, okay, that's great for them, but this is not gonna work for me. I get, I get watch time, I get the metrics, but what I do is a little bit more different and I'm saying, well, not necessarily. I believe that every channel, every content creator on YouTube uh, can do this. All they need to do is be creative and analyze and adjust uh, appropriately, especially when it comes to your programming schedule. Uh, you can really analyze and adjusting a few little things by leveraging assets that you currently have right now or just something that wouldn't take a lot of time that could make the biggest difference for your channel. Now, I'm thinking about uh, some YouTubers that have been on YouTube for a very long time that it's really affecting, uh, like Devin Supertramp. He puts out amazing videos, really high quality videos where he puts a lot of production. There's a lot of entertainment in it and there's a lot of fun but for Devin to really scale that he'd either need to really hire a lot of people put more money into it I mean which will take a lot more time this guy doesn't have time I mean he's traveling all over the world doing all these things he just doesn't have more time to do that but he could have other people that he hires for that, but that's not necessarily the best option. There's other options too. Now, uh, I would recommend that he put the behind the scenes and how-to tutorials, but Devin already has a second channel. He can't necessarily rob that from his second channel because that's what his second channel is about. But being creative, he can do other options. Now, I actually consult for a YouTube channel. It's called Studio C. They do sketch comedies and they have a sketch comedies anywhere from two minutes to four minutes and they're on different topics and they put up a lot of content on YouTube uh, and it's really fun and engaging. Well, one of the strategies that we talked about with them that they could do to leverage their older library of content is to get a camera, record some of the actors talking about their favorite sketches that happens on Studio C and then replay those sketches in a compilation. And what happens there is the uh, actors are able to connect with the audience, um, share some tidbits and some facts that they didn't even know about, have some jokes that are there, and then they watch the same video that they probably watched a couple of years ago, but it's repackaged and reformed and they're watching it and it's working. It's basically working because it's getting a lot more watch time minutes. It's giving YouTube what it actually wants, a little bit more longer form content, and it's really making the channel explode. So with Devin and other people like that, I think it's just like, hey, you have this huge library. Let's just get creative. Let's just find ways to leverage that without putting a lot more work into it. I truly believe that there's change always going to be happening on YouTube uh, and all the other platforms that are out there. It's just going to happen. What we need to do is kind of analyze, take a step step back, bring other people in, and really look at some strategies and test things out, try things out. Be willing to do that to see what's gonna work, what's gonna stick. You'll be surprised what actually goes on. Now, I have a question for you. Everybody that's watching this video, has this algorithm helped you or has it hurt you? Has it made you happy or has it made you sad? Has it made you more money? Has it made you less money? I wanna hear your thoughts. Put it in the comments below. This is gonna be interesting. I wanna see what's actually going on with the people that are actually watching watching this video. I also put my presentation at the Vid Summit that we go a little bit more in depth in a different direction on this topic. It's really, really interesting. Go ahead and check that out. And if you are new to me, I have a plethora of videos about marketing, about YouTube, about audience development. It's gonna help you be more successful in these areas. So go ahead and hit subscribe, check out a few videos, and have a wonderful and productive day.